Welcome to another Google Ads case study. My name is Paulo Galera and I'm the founder of Galera Advertising where we help e-commerce brands doing anywhere between 500,000 and 50 million a year to increase sales and returning customers by improving Google Ads results. In today's case study, we are going to take a look at how we generated 251,000 for this e-commerce brand on a 4.22 times ROAS. Uh, only spending uh, $60,000. So this case study uh, has a few seconds. First, we're going to take a look at the ad account. Then we are going to go into a presentation where I'm going to explain to you exactly uh, what this client was struggling with, some client background, uh, some of the implementations we did, some main implementations we did on the ad account that really changed the course of the account. And finally, uh, the results that these implementations generated. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the case study. So as you can see here on the ad account, um, we spent uh, almost $60,000 and made back $251,000 on a cost per acquisition of 19, cost per purchase of $19. The ROAS here was 4.22. And just so you see, uh, just so that you see that those are real results, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. And as you can see here on the screen, uh, the results are the same. Also, I'm going to show you the conversions tab here on the Google Ads account, as this is where the Google Shopping app purchase uh, conversion is set. As you can see here, that's the same conversion value. Also, one piece of information which is really interesting is their Shopify uh, uh, dashboard. So. As you can see here, their total revenue for the year was $335,000, which means that Google Ads drove a majority of their revenue, almost 74% of their revenue came from Google Ads alone. Uh, and the, the returning customer right here, as you can see, also increased, which is also something I'm going to show to you in the presentation. So as you can see here, a little bit of client background, this brand sells uh, artisan homewares, small furniture items, really interesting brand. They sell really well-made products, very eye-catching products. They're from Wisconsin, United States. They sell worldwide through their Shopify store. Uh, their store does about 335,000 a year in sales. Now uh, uh, scaling up, we are helping them improve results to reach 500,000, 600,000 a year in a year in sales. Their AOV is about $69. And as you can see on the right, their yearly uh, screenshot of revenue there. Uh, their main struggles before joining Galera Advertising where they went through a massive drop in results after Performance Max campaign. Uh, the Performance Max campaigns replaced Smart Shopping. So before us, they relied a lot on Smart Shopping, which was a big problem because when the automatic transition happened, what ended up happening is uh, they lost pretty much their only source of consistent results within Google Ads. And as you saw, Google Ads drives majority of the revenue, which uh, made a, a whole mess inside of their business pretty much. Second point, they had a low ratio of returning customers due to lacking of uh, a robust remarketing strategy, which is also something I'm going to show you. We implemented and brought uh, fantastic results for them. Third point, low depth of stock on best-selling items, making campaigns inconsistent. This point does not have a lot to do with uh, Google Ads itself. It has more to do with fulfillment and stock management. However, this really, really impacted the results of the campaigns because uh, this is something that's not directly correlated with the campaigns, but that directly impacted the results. We found a way to optimize this. We talked to the client. We uh, worked with them to improve this one thing inside of their business that uh, improved results a lot. Fourth point, could not increase spending without compromising ROAS. So that's a big thing uh, within uh, Google Ads. Most brands uh, face that you pretty much increase spending and have a, a, a ROAS drop. There's a few ways around it, which I'm going to show to you in a second what we did here for them. So now let's talk about key ad account implementations. So the first one, I'm going to talk today about four main implementations. The first one is implementation of a standard shopping campaign to increase exposure to the shopping network. So after uh, Smart Shopping transitioned to only Performance Max, we see that launching uh, a standard shopping campaign alongside it 
uh, does help a lot. Beyond providing valuable product and keyword information, it allows you to have much more control over each SKU. It also helps the main PMX. What I mean here is pretty much uh, the shopping, uh, the, the uh, standard shopping company will give you data by product and will allow you to optimize each product individually, the beatings uh, individually. Additionally, it helps the performance max because by knowing on an individual product level uh, the bids and the keywords and, and the title optimizations you need to make and pretty much having more data around each of your products and each of your SKUs, you can go ahead and optimize your merchant center feed, therefore improving also your Google uh, performance max campaign. Second, uh, uh, key implementation here was diversification of assets within the PMAX campaign. So when we start working with them, they had only one PMAX with one asset group, which is not ideal. Uh, in the beginning, it's a good idea. However, as you develop the campaigns, you have to be more specific with your performance max uh, asset groups. Here we did a subdivision of asset groups with specific categories of products for specific audiences. So this brand, they, they have a, a, a variety of categories. They sell uh, home furniture, small items. So each, each uh, of their customers is very different what they are looking for with them. Therefore, they need to have a performance max campaign uh, broken down into subdivisions. Each asset group from now on, after we did this implementation, focused on one uh, different category of, of product. All the assets were optimized around it, the images, the pictures, the headlines, and then we had uh, the targeting automatically uh, uh, adjusted to that new reality, making the campaign much more precise. The third point here, remarketing campaigns in the display and YouTube network, aiming for an increase in returning customers and increasing brand awareness. So as I mentioned before, they were struggling to get a returning customers. They had a real uh, low ratio of returning customers. You can see that on Shopify. Uh, and what we realized that their remarketing strategy was not quite uh, nailed down. So this immediately impact impacted branding campaigns, driving costs down as impressions uh, uh, went up. So we started all these remarketing campaigns, which uh, bring uh, customers back in a much lower cost, uh, which caused the whole account to perform better pretty much, including the branded uh, campaigns, the branding campaigns. Fourth point, the last point here, regular tests and adjustments in bidding. I know you must have heard this before, but this is the single most important when it comes to day-to-day -day optimizations because this is where you really can find an edge, really can find uh, up into which point your campaigns can go. So especially on particular dates, such as Black Friday, for example, it's a best practice to reduce target ROAS or the target CPA to have more impressions. So this is a classic example of a, a, a crucial moment in, in the year where you have to uh, play around with your target, uh, uh, your bidding, so that you have uh, you can use uh, uh, Google Ads better throughout that, that that those days. So on other occasions, the inverse is true. Sometimes you have to uh, uh, increase the target rows and increase the target CPA instead of reducing it to get more impressions during Black Friday, for example, because you already uh, on Black Friday you already know that you are getting uh, more purchases. Therefore, you can pretty much let Google a little bit more loose in terms of uh, your bidding and your target goals. Uh, implementation of standard shopping campaigns to increase exposure to the shopping network. This point I already mentioned before, but I had one extra slide here, so I'm going to just skip it. Now let's talk about highlights. We spent, as I mentioned before, 59,000, made back $251,000 on a 422 uh, times ROAS, 422% return on ad spend. Uh, the number, another highlight which was very, very, very interesting, as I mentioned before, the number of returning customers went up by 75% at the end of 2022. So we had uh, a phase there, the end of the year was really when we started uh, paying more attention to the returning customers. That's when uh, we aligned with the client to really give an emphasis to that, which 
uh, was made not only on the ad account but also uh, within other marketing efforts on the client side email marketing for example uh, and optimizations on the website specifically for returning customers but as you can see here uh, the returning customer rate doubled from from 10 from a nine percent to 19 percent nine and a half to 19 percent uh, as you can see on the screen the biggest thing though the biggest highlight i think here is more than 73 percent of the brand's total revenue was driven by google ads alone as you can see from two uh, from 335,000 uh, 251 were, were driven by uh, uh, Google ads alone. So this brand is heavily reliant on Google ads, which in some cases is a good thing, in some cases is not. You, you really wanna diversify your traffic sources. However, in this case, Google was uh, and still is their main revenue driver. Google is such an important acquisition platform for them and for most brands out there, I believe. And you can really make Google bring uh, uh, 50, 70% of your total revenue if you do it right, if you have the right strategy in place. So this was a quick summary of what we did for this brand throughout this last year. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you found some uh, actionable insights you can implement on your ad account, specifically if you run a store, if you run a brand, those insights can be very valuable within your Google Ads strategy. Now, if you wanna increase your Google Ads results and you're not quite sure how to do so, maybe your current team is underperforming, maybe you're trying to manage the campaigns yourself, in both cases, uh, make sure to click the first link in the description and book an intro call with me. That's a casual conversation where we're going to take a look at your account and I'm going to honestly tell uh, which areas you can be improving and from there we can put together a quick plan to improve your results. If you like what you see there, if you like what we have to offer, then you can go ahead and improve your Google Ads results and potentially make Google Ads drive 50, 60, 70% of your revenue for the next year. So that's it for this case study and I will see you in the next one.